California's highways and freeways are built using the most advanced safety systems available. Lighting standards, an important part of the safety system, can be an impact hazard for drivers. Therefore, a breakaway slip base is often installed on unprotected lighting standards to prevent serious passenger injuries if a lighting standard is struck by a vehicle. Some of the most important people directly responsible for the correct installation of these slip bases are maintenance personnel, inspectors, and contractors. They are a vital link in the chain of people who ensure that safe, effective lighting is a part of our highway system. Our purpose here is to review some recent design changes and to show the proper procedures for the installation of breakaway slip bases on lighting standards. Recent changes to designs of the slip base used on California Type 30 and 31 lighting standards are the result of two vehicle impact tests performed on heavy lighting standards with long mast arms and breakaway slip bases. These changes consist of an increase in slip base clamping bolt torques and the use of thicker plate washers. This impact test program was conducted by the Transportation Laboratory of the California Department of Transportation. The main reason for the research program was to learn if the slip base used on California Type 30 and 31 lighting standards works well when impacted by small cars. Another reason was to determine what effect higher slip base clamping bolt torques would have on the breakaway resistance of the slip base. Let's take a look at the reaction of the vehicle, the test dummy, and the lighting standard during two impact tests. The results of these two impact tests with small cars show that the slip base, even with higher torques on the clamping bolts, is a good breakaway device. Occupant injuries in both tests would have been minor. The car was repaired for $730 after the first impact test and was used for the second test. To work correctly, however, the slip base must be properly installed. Sometimes in the past, installation errors have been unknowingly made in the field. Let's look at a few of these. Here, the installer did not understand how a slip base works. The clamping bolts, which must be free to slip out of the V-notches during an impact, have been neatly grouted in. Cars have hit poles like this one that didn't budge. Other incorrect assembly practices which might cause serious problems include the use of clamping bolts that are too short to accept a full nut. Long anchor bar stubs which extend too high above the concrete footing thereby protruding into the slip plane and the absence of hardened round flat washers which must be sandwiched between the upper and lower slip base plates just below the keeper plate. Another problem which may begin in the design stage is caused by the placement of a lighting standard in a pocket on an embankment or cut slope. Now the pocket will snag the pole base and prevent it from uplifting and slipping away. Field personnel can avoid this problem by contouring the earth slope downstream from the pole base to allow room for the pole to slip forward when impacted. To eliminate any confusion, we want to demonstrate the correct way to inspect slip base parts, install a slip base on a lighting standard pole, 
and erect a standard. The standard shown is a California Type 31. It has a 35 foot high pole and a 30 foot long mast arm. The same inspection and assembly procedure should be used for similar slip bases and lighting standards, even though the required clamping bolt torques may be different. The erection of this lighting standard occurred along a freeway where a standard was being replaced after an accident. At the demonstration site, the foundation has been poured with the anchor bars embedded in the concrete. The mast arm is first bolted to the pole. The mating surfaces on both the pole and mast arm should be flat and free from high spots or lumps of galvanizing material. This will ensure even bearing and prevent loss of cap screw tension. Check the length of the cap screws which are used to fasten the mast arm to the pole. If the unthreaded shank is too long, the cap screw cannot be tightened. If the overall cap screw length is too short, then there won't be enough threads engaged to carry the load. It is very important to get the right tension in the cap screws. Wind loads on long mast arms can cause fatigue in the cap screws, and the cap screws are more likely to fail if they aren't tight. Because of the fatigue problem, the specifications for cap screws have been changed. Now you should tighten the screws one-third of a turn past snug tight. Use only new cap screws which have plenty of dry lubricant on their threads. Before assembling the bottom slip base plate onto the pole, inspect all slip base parts. Check the keeper plate to make sure the three holes match the radius in the V-notches of both the top and bottom slip base plates. This will allow clamping bolts to fit snugly into the bottom of the V-notches. The plate washers must be the right thickness, one half inch in this case, so they won't bend when the clamping bolts are tightened. The three slip base clamping bolts must be new. A325 galvanized bolts with clean, undamaged threads. The clamping bolts must be four and one half inches long for the slip base of a type 30 or 31 lighting standard so that the bolts can be properly tightened. Nuts should be either ASTM grade 2H or DH, and the nut thread should have a good coating of dry lubricant. It is important that the clamping bolts and nuts are new so that critical tension in the clamping bolts will be accurate. Inspect the top and bottom base plates to make sure that the locations of the V-notches of both plates match. There should be no globs of galvanizing or gouges in the notches that could interfere with the clamping bolts sliding easily out of the base notches. The tools you will need for assembling the slip base are a recently calibrated torque wrench with adequate torque capacity a 1 and 7 16 inch open end wrench for holding the heads of the 7 8 inch diameter clamping bolts and adjusting and tightening the anchor bolt nuts and a carpenter's level for plumbing the pole. Before attaching the bottom slip base plate to the pole base plate, place the bottom plate over the footing anchor bars to make sure it fits. Also make sure that the distance from the ground to the top surface of the bottom slip base plate is four and one half inches or less so that an impacting vehicle can pass over the base plate without snagging. Roughly level the base plate so that only minor adjustments need be made when the pole is erected. The anchor bars must be accurately positioned when the footing is poured. Any hot or cold bending of the high strength anchor bars 
could reduce their tensile strength and cause embrittlement or cracking. This must not be allowed. The height of the electrical conduit should be checked to make sure that it does not extend into the slit plane. If it does, cut the conduit off below the slit plane. After inspecting the slip base parts, the slip base can be assembled. Install the slip base onto the bottom of the pole while the pole is still on the ground so that the clamping bolts can be torqued evenly. All parts must be installed as shown on the California Department of Transportation standard plans. The slip base clamping bolts are placed so that when the pole is set in place, the clamping bolt heads will be underneath and the nuts will be on top. The keeper plate and hardened round flat washers are sandwiched between the two slip base plates. After assembly, a check should be made to ensure that the flat washers are placed below the keeper plate and have not been left out. These three round flat washers provide clearance between the two slip base plates so that if the lighting standard is impacted, the top slip base plate will slide easily. Each of the three slip base clamping bolts should be installed as deeply as possible into the V-notches of both slip base plates and first be tightened enough to hold the base together. The final tightening of each clamping bolt should be done in two stages until the proper torque has been reached. This type 31 lighting standard requires 150 foot-pounds of torque on each of the three clamping bolts. After the slip base has been assembled and the clamping bolts have been properly torqued, the pole is raised. A sling is placed around the mast arm at the balance point. The balance point will vary according to the length of the mast arm and type of lighting standard. The long mast arm may be safely controlled by attaching a rope near the luminaire. As the pole is lifted, care should be taken not to damage the slip base. Gently place the base plate onto the anchor bars in the foundation to prevent thread damage. With the sling still supporting the pole and the mast arm, the hardened flat washers and nuts are placed onto the anchor bars and snug tightly. At this point, the back side of the pole should be plumbed by adjusting the leveling nuts. Plumbing the back of the tapered pole compensates for the slight amount of forward leaning that occurs when the dead load of the mast arm is released. The top nuts of the anchor bars are wrench tightened. There is no torque requirement, but they should be fully wrench tightened by hand. Now the sling of the mast arm can be released. The threaded stubs on the anchor bars which project above the nuts must be checked for clearance from the slip plane. If any anchor bar extends into the slip plane even slightly, it must be sawed off just above the nut. For corrosion protection, the sawn bar should be painted with a zinc-rich primer. The foundation is finished by grouting beneath the lower base plate. The top of the existing concrete footing should be clean and damp.
It is very important to allow enough clearance between the grout surface and the heads of the clamping bolts so that if the lighting standard is hit by a vehicle, the clamping bolts will be completely free to slide out of the V-notches. A minimum of one half inch should be left beneath the clamping bolt heads around the V-notches. The grout should be well packed beneath the bottom of the base plate. In summary, the most important things to remember when installing a slip base are inspecting all parts of the lighting standard and slip base carefully and install the parts in their proper positions. Before raising the standard, tighten the nut on each clamping bolt to the right torque in two stages. This torque is 150 foot-pounds for the slip base clamping bolts on the Type 31 lighting standard. Tighten the foundation anchor bar nuts while the pole is still supported by the safety sling. Make sure that neither the anchor bars nor the lighting conduit extend into the slip plane. Check for at least one half inch clearance between each of the clamping bolt heads and the grout surface. It is very important that all of these installation details be carried out correctly. Remember, human lives are at stake. If slip bases are not installed properly, they will not work. Experience gained from past accidents occurring along freeways and from vehicle impact tests has proven that the breakaway slip base, when properly installed, results in safer highways.